What's up guys? In this video I'm going to be going over what exactly an FPV drone is and all the parts that go into it. By the end of this video you'll know what each of these individual parts are, what they do, and how they interact with each other. So if you click this video, you probably already know what an FPV drone is. In case you don't, FPV stands for first person view. FPV drones like this one have a camera that sits in the front of the drone and the image from this camera is transmitted to a set of goggles that you wear. The goggles give the pilot the ability to see exactly what the drone is seeing, kind of like a cockpit view. FPV drones are a lot more acrobatic, are much faster and rely on more manual input than standard drones like a Phantom or a Mavic. So now that you know what an FPV drone is, let's go over the parts that go into one of these drones. The first component I'm going to talk about actually isn't even in this pile right here, but it's the most essential component to building an FPV drone, and it's the frame. Now, frames come in a bunch of different configurations and sizes. Some are meant to be freestyling around a park, and some are meant to be doing slower, more cinematic shots. This drone right here is one of my five inch freestyle drones and this one's made out of carbon fiber. This on the other hand is one of my smaller drones that I actually use for indoor shooting and this is made out of plastic. Most of the time you'll see smaller drones like this made out of plastic and bigger drones made out of carbon fiber because it's more durable. Typically frames are measured by the prop size that it can handle. This is a five inch frame. So the props that are on here are five inch props. This drone takes 2.5 inch props, so this is considered a 2.5 inch frame. Another way of measuring frames is from motor to motor. Every frame, whether it's a smaller one or a bigger one, will have mounting holes on it. Typically these holes are 30 by 30 for bigger drones like this, or 20 by 20. And then smaller drones like this use a 26 by 26 mounting pattern. So when you're ordering a frame, make sure that whatever you're using will fit the frame that you have. If you have 30 by 30 holes, get a 30 by 30 flight controller ESC. If you have 20 by 20, get a 20 by 20 stack. The first electronic component of a drone that we're gonna take a look at is actually the flight controller. And the flight controller is located right here on this drone. Obviously the flight controller will be in a different spot depending on what drone you have, but on this one, it's right here. The flight controller is pretty much the brain of your drone. This holds all the sensors, the microprocessor, gyros, accelerometers, and it basically just tells the drone what to do. Anything else on your drone is gonna have wires coming back to this board. Since this is the brain of your drone, you do need to connect it to a computer so that you can configure all the settings on it. And to do that, typically there's a micro USB or a USB-C port somewhere on the board. Connect that to your computer and you'll be able to configure all the settings on the flight controller. Typically flight controllers are organized by their size and the microprocessor chip size. So this flight controller right here is a 30 by 30 F7, meaning these holes are 30 millimeters apart and the microprocessor that's on board is an F7. This flight controller is a 26 by 26 toothpick flight controller and this is an F4 because it has an F4 microprocessor on the back. And this is meant for smaller drones like this one. If you have the choice between an F4 or an F7, go with an F7 because the processor is faster. Flight controllers can come as a standalone unit like this one, where this is just a flight controller, and you can get flight controllers that have ESCs built in and sometimes even video transmitters. For example, this drone has a video transmitter built in, whereas neither of these boards do. You can also have ESCs built into a flight controller like this one. And that brings me to my next component, which is ESCs. Since this is an all-in-one unit, you can connect these pads right here. On each corner, there will be three pads. Those connect directly to a motor. Whereas if you have a flight controller and an ESC is separate, the ESC will look something like this. This is a four-in-one ESC that actually matches with this other flight controller. So this would plug in here, and then you would put it in the drone right like that. Your motors would be connected to these pads right here. This is considered a four in one ESC because there's four ESCs in one board. Whereas this is just a single ESC by itself. 
ESCs basically tell the motor what to do. They communicate from the flight controller to the motor. While these boards are a lot cleaner on a build, you're not gonna have an ESC mounted to the arm. If something goes wrong with an ESC on this board, you're gonna have to replace the whole thing. Whereas if you have these ESCs, they're significantly cheaper than a foreign one, and it's a lot easier to replace. However, you need room on the arm to mount this. Here's an example of one of my drones with individual ESCs. This is my basher drone, and if something happens to an ESC, I don't have to worry about replacing an entire board. All I have to do is take an ESC off and replace it. This 4-in-1 ESC will connect directly to a motor. This ESC right here is going to need a flight controller that doesn't have ESCs, like this one. This basically has a power, a ground, and then a signal. So that's going to connect to these wires here, and then you're going to have your motor over on this side. ESCs, like flight controllers, run firmware to communicate with other components. Most new ESCs are using a 32-bit processor that runs BLHeli32 or KISS. Older ESCs use an 8-bit processor and use BLHeli-S firmware. 32-bit processors are newer and let you do things like turtle mode, telemetry, and even adding music to your ESCs. I made a whole video on how to add music to a BLHeli32 ESC, so I'll leave a link to that right up here. Other things to pay attention to when you're picking out an ESC, whether it's a 4-in-1 or an individual or an all-in-one board, is pay attention to the power input you plan on using. If an ESC is rated for 2 to 4S, like this one, you can use this ESC on a drone using a 2S, 3S, or 4S battery. If I were to plug a 6S battery into the drone that's holding this, this would get fried. Since we're kind of making our way down the drone, next thing to talk about is motors. Motors could honestly be its own video. There are a couple different things that can help you determine what kind of motors you want to put on your drone. Probably the biggest thing is what's the other equipment that you're using for your build. If the rest of your components are rated for 4S, get motors that are rated for 4S. Motors are typically labeled with an S rating. Brushless motors like this are the standard for almost all FPV drones. Brushed motors are often used on micro drones due to their small size and weight. I actually don't think I have any brushed motors around. Brushed motors spin in one direction, while brushless motors like this spin whichever way the ESC tells it to spin. Most 5-inch racing drones have a 16 by 16 mounting pattern like this on the motors, and some frames offer other mounting options as well. The KV rating on a motor refers to the motor's rotations per minute. Lower KV numbers are for larger motors and props, whereas higher KV numbers mean smaller motors and smaller props. The KV rating on this motor is 1700 KV. The rating on this motor is 19,000 KV. Big size difference. Oscar Lang has a really good article on motors and everything about motors. I'll leave a link to that right up here and in the description. So something else that I'm just going to quickly touch on are props. Um, props go hand in hand with motors and depending on what motor you're using will depend on what prop you get. Obviously, if you have a five inch drone, you're going to want five inch propellers. Propellers are always measured in how big they are. Pretty simple. Props come in tri-blade like this, they come in bi-blade like this, they come in quad-blade, and I have a Cinema here that has five blades. I feel like I've even seen props that have eight blades on it. I typically use tri-blade for freestyle and then bi-blade for long range or cruising. All right, now let's talk about the video transmitter or the VTX. This is the module on the drone that transmits the video image back to the ground station or to your FPV goggles. The VTX connects directly to the flight controller for power and to communicate telemetry to the goggles. Some flight controllers have a video transmitter built in. VTXs come in analog or digital. Digital offers much higher resolution FPV video feed, but it has minor latency and a much higher price tag. Analog video transmitters are cheaper, much smaller, and have almost no latency. 
but they have a much lower resolution video. Whether you have a digital or analog VTX, you'll most likely have power outputs measured in milliwatts. Most VTXs will offer different power output levels ranging from 25 milliwatts to 1000 milliwatts or one watt. One watt would be used for long range or to penetrate multiple walls and 25 milliwatts is used for closer range flying. One of the big benefits I think of having analog over digital is the fact that you can actually configure the drone settings through the VTX using a feature called Smart Audio. Basically the VTX connects to the flight controller and then through the OSD menu in your goggles, you're able to change the drone's PID settings, your VTX channel. You can change quite a few settings just using that feature. And that's not something that you get with digital. Another thing to mention real quick before we move on to cameras is each VTX will most likely also have mounting holes just like the flight controller and just like the 4-in-1 ESCs. Typically they either have 30 by 30 or 20 by 20. So make sure you get one that fits the frame that you're using. All right, the camera is the next component that's essential for flying FPV. When possible, it's best to power an analog camera like this one directly from the video transmitter. So if your video transmitter has an output power capability, connect your camera right up to the VTX. This helps with the overall camera image and it protects it from voltage spikes. If you can't power your camera from the video transmitter, you can just hook it up right to the flight controller. If you have a digital FPV system like the Caddx Vista, your camera is just going to have one cable going directly to the Vista and the Vista is going to be powered and connected to the flight controller. If you have an analog video setup, you're going to have multiple wires on the back and you're basically going to have a yellow wire that transmits the video signal and you're going to have a red and black wire for power and ground. Cameras come in multiple sizes, so be sure to pick one that fits your frame. Full-size cameras aren't used often and are 28 millimeters wide. More common camera sizes are mini and micro. Mini is 21 millimeters and micro is 19. Another awesome option for more compact builds is the ability to have a camera and VTX all in one. So this is a camera that's just ready to go. If you power this off of a five volt source, you'll then have an FPV video feed. I have a video on putting this on like a RC truck. So I'll leave a link to that right up here and in the description. Last but not least, we have our receiver. Your receiver is what communicates with your controller. The receiver that you go with will depend on what controller you're using and what kind of range you want to get. There are two largely used frequencies for receivers. In the US, it's 2.4 gigahertz and 900 millihertz. 900 millihertz is typically used for long range flying, whereas something like this is used for closer range stuff. I personally use FR Sky hardware that's flashed with ELRS and I have been loving the setup. I have Express LRS flashed on this R9MM and then I also have it flashed on my R9M. All receivers will hook directly up to the flight controller. Depending on which receiver you're using will depend on how you have to hook it up. For this R9M flashed with ELRS, I hook it up using the power pads and then I also use these two pads over here, which are RX and TX. For this XM Plus, I hook it up to the power and then this top pad is S bus. So it's using a different protocol and that's something that you have to configure on the flight controller. Here's some additional parts that would go on an FPV drone. A battery, you need to power the thing. Depending on what all your equipment's rated for will depend on what battery you use. I can't not talk about 3D printed parts. No matter what drone you have, I guarantee you if you go on Thingiverse and search your drone, you'll find some 3D printable parts for it. Whether it's a GoPro mount or an arm bumper or an antenna mount, I guarantee you it's out there. And 3D parts really do make up a big part of FPV drones. LEDs. LEDs are basically just an added accessory if you have the space. Most flight controllers nowadays actually have pads specifically for LEDs and you can control the LED color and strobe pattern through the flight controller's firmware. A beeper. This is actually a beeper LED combo and beepers are very useful for finding a downed quad. So if you fail safe in the woods or something, you can use a beeper to find where your drone is. And these things are pretty loud. A GPS. GPS is useful for long range flights and can save your drone from fail safing in an area where you can't get it back. 
I only have GPS units on my long range drones. The GPS can actually tell the drone in the event of a fail safe or a disconnect from the controller, how to get back home using its GPS coordinates. I wouldn't suggest doing a long range build without one of these. Battery straps, they come in all different sizes. This is for a bigger drone. This is obviously for something like a toothpick, but you need a way to secure the battery to the drone. So you use a battery strap. So that's gonna do it for this video. This was mainly meant for people just getting into FPV or for anyone who just wants to learn about the breakdown of the parts that actually make up one of these drones. If this helped you out, make sure you like and leave a comment and be sure to subscribe to the channel.